and Sarah. Just and it, up. it says we're now live streaming on Facebook. So if you're joining on Facebook as well, say hi in the comments. We've got lots of people live saying hi in the comments too. Also, that should be going live on Facebook now. It's just redirecting. So that should be working. Okay. Ellie watching this on the treadmill. That sounds perfect. <laughs> on the treadmill, oh my. <laughs> okay, so let's just have a look at the page. Yes, so we are live, which is absolutely brilliant. Thank you everybody for bearing with me. Like I said, I'm using a slightly older computer. Have to upgrade when all this is done. Um, so I am joined by the amazing Jessica Crane today. She is a salon consultant and she's going to be talking about how to introduce a price increase in your beauty salon and how to do it successfully. Um, and she'll also be touching on a little bit about when is the right time to do this post coronavirus, which I know for a lot of people you're asking at the moment because obviously clients are dying to see you, but they may not have as much excess cash to spend as they did before the pandemic. So I will hand you over to Jessica. She's gonna do an amazing presentation for you. And then we're gonna have a Q&A at the end. So if you do have any questions as she's going along, if you just pop it in the Q&A box at the bottom on Zoom, or if you're on Facebook, if you just comment in the comment section, then I will make sure that Jessica will answer your questions at the end. Jessica, thank you for coming. And I'm happy for you to take it away. Perfect. Thank you, Amanda. So I'm just going to share my screen here so we can get this uh, presentation up. Let's go from the beginning. Um, okay, fab. So thank you, everybody, for joining and say hi as you're joining on uh, with us live in the webinar or on Facebook. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jessica Crane and I'm a business coach for salon owners and I help salon owners to increase their profit. OK, so our profit is our main goal and we help them to execute their vision. Um, so we do this via our online coaching program, which is designed specifically for salon owners, for hair and beauty salon owners. We have a few clinics as well. Um, and we provide all the tools, business knowledge, skills and resources. And we're helping launch our clients to seven figures and beyond. Um, and we include lifetime access and weekly coaching. But we have quite an um, we focus on mindset and finances and marketing and branding and systems and operations as well. So today what we're going to be talking about is how to introduce a price increase into the salon. So a lot of people have been worried about this, focused on this kind of today I want to give you the nitty gritty of actually how to do this successfully. So Again, I know a few of you are live now with us and a few are on Facebook. So I want you to think about these questions before we dive into the training. So who at the minute struggles with pricing their treatment or services? So answer in the comments or in on the chat here in the webinar room. So who struggles with pricing their treatments and services? Who looks at what their competitors are charging for kind of a guide of, oh, should I increase by this much? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Who looks at their competitors and uses that as a bit of a guide for what they're going to do? And who knows what profit they make per treatment or service that they currently deliver in the salon at the moment? OK, so I want you to have a little think about those four questions for me and I want you to go ahead. And if you're watching the replay, go ahead and pop your answers in there so that we can circle back round and have a look later on for you as well. So I want you to have a think about those four questions. Because when you're embarking on implementing a price increase, there's really two critical steps that you need to master. So the first one is the mindset element. And I know some of you will be thinking, what are you talking about? But let me dive a little bit deeper. So I want you to think about when it comes to a price increase, what feelings are coming up for you right now? If I said to you right now, you've got to go and increase your price. How would you feel about it? Do you feel resistant? 
Do you feel nervous? Do you feel happy? Do you feel excited? Do you feel worried? Do you feel confused? How do you feel about a price increase? And this is really important. So how do you feel and what thoughts are creeping in? When I said to you, and when you kind of joined this webinar today about a price increase, what thoughts and feelings creep in as soon as the words price increase is mentioned, okay? Is it positive or are they negative thoughts and feelings? So again, throw it in the comments, whether you're on Facebook or here in the room, throw them in the comments so that we can have a look as well. Do you feel that your clients will complain about a price increase or do you feel that they'll be understanding? Do you think that your team will be on board? This is something a lot of my clients we've been discussing this week is getting their team on board is equally as important to in order to really execute a price increase properly in your salon. Do you feel the team will be on board or do you feel that they're resistant? And when you are focusing on these thoughts and on these feelings, I want you to think about what money blocks are showing up for you. OK, what feelings I really want you to take this into consideration, all these thoughts and all these feelings that it's throwing up for you right now, thinking about increasing your prices. Because knowing your money story and being comfortable with money and pricing will have a huge impact on you in implementing a price increase and this strategy being really effective in your business. You and your team need to feel empowered, you need to feel confident, you feel need to feel knowledgeable, and you need to make sure that this price increase in this strategy, you're all going to be able to be empowered and knowledge and feel great about it. So as soon as a client has a question, you can answer it with confidence and feel great about it, rather than oh, I'm not sure, oh, oh, it's gone up a little bit, oh, it's a very different energy behind having a price increase where you aren't really sure why and where you've had to increase the prices, but you just know that you have, and where you have took full control and really empowered the team and to get them on board and to get them excited about why and what's had to happen in order to grow your business and keep the business moving forwards. So, if you're on a low frequency and a frequency of lack, you'll be attracting lack into your life and into your business. But the team will feel this as well. If you're scared of increasing your prices, your team will feel that as well. And then they will feel scared of increasing the prices as well. So it's really important that you make sure that your mindset is right before you deliver it to the team in order to help them be in the right frame of mind and to be excited and on board about having a price increase. Um, and I really want to explain this to you because a price increase and prices and money has absolutely nothing to do with what your clients can or cannot afford. They are perfectly capable of making that decision for themselves. We are not there to judge what your client can or cannot afford. It has everything to do with your own fear about what they think. Okay, so I'm sure if I asked all of you right now, if you could go and have your hair done and the price had increased, who would care? Nobody would care. So Again, it's really not about what your client can or cannot afford. And I totally agree with what Amanda said. Some people won't have as much money as they did before. But, you know, some people may, unfortunately, through this period, have lost their job or have not had the same income. But however, if people are choosing to come to your salon, it's because they can afford to come. So it's not for you to judge what they can or cannot afford is your own fear that you need to get over of increasing your prices. And for the hundreds of thousands of clients that you have that have never batted an eye on your price increases in the past, 
we always focus on that one client who made that one tiny comment one time <laughs> about a 50p increase and we let that have a huge knock-on effect going forwards okay so don't worry about the one client having that small comment when you've probably got hundreds or even thousands of clients who have always been more than happy and accommodating to your prices and any price increases that you've ever had to have in the past before, okay? So the first step is really making sure that you feel really confident, empowered, um, knowledgeable about your price increase. But the second part, and this is really where we're going to have a look at the how, okay? The second part is knowing your numbers because educating yourself and being knowledgeable and knowing your numbers is going to be the key to giving you the confidence into implementing that price increase in the first place. So this is my absolute favourite step so we're going to look at how do you actually know your numbers okay so a lot of people at the moment are saying well how do how much do i need to increase my prices by why do i need to increase them when should i increase them and there are so many questions about the actual practical implementation of having a price increase so let's jump into the more practical steps. So over the past few weeks, all of your businesses, your business finances will have completely changed. OK, so you need to make sure that your new prices and a price increase or, you know, knowing your numbers is something that you should do very regularly, like at least monthly to make sure that everything is still in check. So, you know, the, the world of finance, the world of business has changed dr dramatic, like just phenomenally. OK, so you need to make sure that you're covering all your outgoings. So during this time, you might have had bills that you've deferred. You might have had loans. You might have um, increased bills. You might have extra bills that you didn't have before. You might have got credit cards. You might have backdated stock bills. You might have, um, obviously, payroll is hopefully being covered for most of you, but you, some of you might be topping that up. But you're going to all have had some sort of incurred costs during this period that need we need to make sure are going to be covered going forwards in your business so you need to reassess your costs from scratch so some of us we're looking at it as almost like a whole new brand new business okay so that we're re-looking at all the business costs from scratch and what your new business costs will be going forwards when you're back into your salon um, and we need to factor in all of these changes that have been happening. So this is my profit equation. This is what we inject with all of our clients. So I'll talk you through it and then we'll look into each piece a little bit further as well. So whenever you're pricing your services and treatments, each treatment or service should be priced following this process. So the business costs, so you should all know your business costs and how much it costs you to open the door per minute of the day, okay? You should know all of those business costs inside out and upside down, okay? And, you know, using this time to look at how you can reduce some of those business costs as well. So who, again, let's have a quick little pause. So in the comments, I want you to tell me if you know your business costs to the minute. How much does it cost you per minute to open your salon door? OK, you might know to the 15 minutes, but I want you to throw it in the comments and let me know who knows their business costs to the minute. So first of all, we need to know that because we need to know if we're going to do a 60 minute treatment or service, 
well, how much do we need in order to cover the business costs for 60 minutes of our salon to be open? So that's one element. The next element is the stock. I'm sure you've all got product brands over the last year, six months, the prices constantly go up and down. You might have changed product brand. You might have brought in their luxury line instead of their standard line. Again, the product, the, pro, the stock bill for that is going to have gone up. So you need to make sure that you're covering the stock element of delivering that treatment or service. And then obviously you have your VAT and your tax. So, and this is where, again, it's really important for you all to understand that every single one of your businesses is completely different. And that's why you can't look at the salon down the road because your business costs and their business costs will be completely different. You may use a really expensive product brand and your stock cost will be completely different to their stock cost. So we've looked at this with our clients. Sometimes one person's stock cost could be 50% more than the other person's stock costs. So you can't compare. So trying to compare your price list and the salon down the road is like trying to compare an apple and a banana. Like you just, you just can't, okay? So again, coming back to the VAT and the tax, your VAT, you could not be VAT registered and the salon down the road could be 20% that red you know on a 20 percent rate you could be on a 13 percent rate you know there's all these variations that you just need to make sure that your treatment or service your costs what you're charging is going to cover your outgoings and then in there you've got your worth so this is your wage for that treatment or service and that wage obviously needs to include commission um and whatever you want to earn, you know, you might want to earn £50 an hour, £10 an hour, £100 an hour, whatever you want to earn, that needs to go into that slot there. And then this is one that <laughs> with all, all of our clients, nobody ever factors in, is profit. If you don't charge for profit and factor profit into your business, that's why you're not making any. OK, you have to factor in a profit percentage into your treatments and services to make sure that your business is profitable. And then we teach us to reverse engineer the whole process. So if you want to make a hundred grand profit this year, how what do you need to do per day to reach that goal? OK, so who here knows how to reverse engineer their profit? Who factors in profit into their treatments and services? OK, so let me know in the comments. Um, if you're watching the replay, make sure you answer all of these questions so we can come back as well. Awesome. So at the moment, we might also need to be factoring in some extra costs. So PPE being one example. And I know that, you know, with my clients, we've been looking and they've been sourcing PPE and it is so expensive at the moment. So it is going to be a factor that you are going to have to factor in for PPE. OK. Um, and the other thing that you might have to factor in as well is that you might have to have reduced numbers of people in the, be, in the building. So what this might mean is that if you would normally have 10 clients a day, you might only be able to have five per stylist, per therapist. You might have to half the trade of what you would normally have coming in and out of your business. Obviously, you know, we do not know any of these things for sure at the moment, but we do need to make a plan A, plan B, plan C and plan D. So you need to prepare for a few different scenarios. But what that's going to mean is that you're going to have to be paying your staff a wage bill for a lot more potentially white space in your business. OK, so 
you need to make sure that you are booking clients in for the right treatment or service as well. Um, this is something we're talking about with our clients. And what we helped our clients do was either to funnel your clients onto an email list or onto preferably a Facebook group so that you can continue to communicate with them. And when the time is right and you can start booking them back in, you can help to that process to be a lot more streamlined and a lot more simple. So for example, with a hair client, at least you could say, you know, oh, drop us an image of your hair below and we can let you know what to book in for on the online booking. Because if some had, and like, if you look at my nails, for example, normally I would have an infill but I'm gonna to have to have a whole new set, right? So you need to make sure that those clients are booking back in for the right treatment or service because it might not necessarily be what they normally have. And for you guys, that might be more time. So for me, maybe an infill is normally 45 minutes an hour, but if I'm gonna have a whole new set, then that person might need to book more time for me. So it's making sure that your clients are booking in for the right treatment and service because they might need something different to what they normally have because they haven't visited for a while. If for hair, you know, their regrowth is now down to their ears, well, that's not a regrowth, that's going to be a full head colour. So we need to make sure that they are booking in for the right treatment or service so that that gives you the right amount of time. And again, so that we can charge them correctly. Like some of these cuts are going to be a restyle. It's not going to be a cut and finish. It's going to be a restyle. And you may want to look at having a temporary surcharge. So yes, you could have an increase in your prices, which going back will be absolutely the right time to do it because your business can't afford to make a loss. So implementing that price increase, but also you may introduce a temporary surcharge because these PPE costs, this extra cost for our wage bill for our white space is only going to be temporary. So you may have, you know, when you go to a restaurant and they charge you like a 12% service fee, you might introduce something similar in your salon where you may have a cut and finish surcharge and a colour and cut surcharge or whatever treatment or service, you might have to add an additional surcharge. Now, the best way for you to do that is to just communicate it with your clients and so that they thoroughly understand this is for extra cleaning time, for extra PPE, for social distancing, et cetera. As soon as these restrictions are lifted from our, our business, our prices will go back to X, Y, Z. So you may have a temporary price increase, you may have a permanent price increase plus the surcharge. You need to look at what is right for your business and your numbers as a unique business. So this is where I would stress to you not to look at what other people are doing, but make sure that what you're doing is going to support your business. Um, so when you've got all of that information together, you really then want to share this with the team. OK, so you can we teach our clients to put it all into a big spreadsheet and so they have then the profit margin per treatment and service. And for a lot of our clients that come in, a lot of them discover that some of their treatments and services are making a loss and they can share this information with the team which helps your team to understand that if they are stretching down appointments by five minutes here and 10 minutes there and adding on 15 minutes, that has a huge impact on the business because that space that is not being charged for. So when you have all this information together, you can then share it with the team so that they fully understand the pricing and why and where there have to be increases so that they feel really confident to deliver this to a client. If a client asks, they feel informed, they feel empowered, they feel educated to explain to that client exactly why you've had to have that price increase. So they don't feel a bit intimidated or insecure or 
you know, sometimes you're blindsided by a question, aren't you? But they need to feel prepared for that and ready that if a client asks, this is exactly why. We're being very transparent, very honest, and we need to make sure that the business is still here in six months, nine months, etc. So it might not be all of your treatments and services that need a price increase, but you always need to make sure that each one is profitable. Okay, so I want to explain to you that profit in a business, profit is not a luxury, profit is not the leftovers, okay? Profit is essential for business survival. The a business needs profit in order to survive. And I want you to think about this right now because this is a perfect scenario to think about it. How long were you able to survive from when you shut your door without help? without a grant, without borrowing money, without anything from your business buffer, from your cash flow, from your own cash flow, your cash reserves, how long was your business able to survive without help? Because one of the things that we teach our clients is to build a three month buffer. And they do it kicking and screaming, they hate it because we put them on a big ban of everything. And you need to be able to survive three months minimum, three to six months is preferable. You need to survive a minimum of three months with nothing coming in, okay? So if you had nothing coming in, which obviously you're all experiencing, how long can your business survive? So profit contributes towards the growth of our industry and the people within it. Okay, if we don't make profit, we can't reinvest, we can't educate, we can't grow our businesses. So profit gives you choices in business. So the more profit you have, money is a tool, it's a resource, that's all it is. And cash is king. So profit will give you choices and profit will enable you to grow and your business to survive as well. So don't look at it as a luxury. OK, this is why I think some people don't factor in profit into their treatments and services because it's kind of seen as a luxury. Oh, if there's anything over, I'll take some profit from the business. That's not how it works. You need to focus on growing your business and making sure that you have the cash to survive and sustain your business as well. So money is purely a mindset and you need to make sure that you are charging your worth. I hand back over to Amanda. Thank you, Jessica. That was brilliant. So much information. And you can just tell from the comments that people are finding this really, really helpful. Um, if anybody does have any questions for mm. Jessica, if you pop them in the Q&A box and we'll get them answered. I'll start with one that we've had through from Amber on Facebook. And she said, do you think if we are spending an hour and a half to do a full set of acrylics, would that impact on the amount of clients that we will be able to see in one day? I guess this must be when salons are finally able to reopen. Yeah, I mean, it depends, obviously, if you're doing an hour and a half, it depends on your opening hours, like how mm. many you can fit back to back in one day but you just need to make sure you're charging an hour and a half's worth of time definitely um and we've had a couple of questions on here as well um d perry has asked what do you consider business cost and what would be under cost so business cost is everything so literally you need to print off like a year's worth of bank statements and look at every penny that leaves your business mm. everything utilities like buying the tea and coffee everything is a business cost because the only one input to your business is client bills you mm. have one input that's it and that has to cover every output so you need to make sure that you know what all of those outputs are. Subscriptions, your salon software system, everything that goes out of that business is a business cost. That's so true. Making sure you incorporate all of those tiny costs that you wouldn't necessarily immediately think of. Um, yeah. All the Amazon orders. Yeah. 
Amazon at the moment must be making a killing. Um, Joanne has asked, well, she said, I was due to register for VAT and increase prices in Feb. I delayed it. How will I justify fat increase then PPE surcharge on top? Yeah, so my thing with that is you get to that stage and then what you need to do is double down and hustle your ass from that 85K and get to over 100. So you need to focus on your marketing. You need to focus on increasing your client retention. You need to focus, really get sharp on your staff being fully utilized. You need to really hustle to over that 100 mark. Um, and then you've, got, you've, got, you've just got to make sure that you are charging correctly as well, because no other trade cares about that other than us if you had a builder a plumber they would say this is the cost plus that mm. that is for the government it's not for us why are we emotional about it you tell your clients with that registered if they have a problem with that go and speak to boris <laughs> you don't make up the rules we just have yeah. to follow them that's so true. Um, Alice has just asked if you could just do a very quick recap on the business costs slash profit sum, please. I think people were just trying to scribble that down quite quickly. Yeah, and you want me to pull it back up whilst Yeah, maybe if you just put the slide back up for her, that um that'd be great. Yeah, let me um do 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 yeah, there we go. Well, we can leave it there for you whilst we carry on <laughs> doing some questions. Um, yes, yeah, so you want to break it down in that format. That's obviously a very high level format, but you do need to make sure that you are including everything when you are devising your price list. Mm. And um, Chantelle has just asked about fitting in the cost of the PPE as she hasn't done a price increase and she will need to do it now. I guess quite a few people were sort of saying in the um, comments, how much would you factor in for PPE? Like you said, PPE is a lot more expensive at the moment because the demand's so high, but is there like a key figure or a ballpark mark that people should be thinking about? Yeah, so first you need to source your PPE so that you know how much it's going to cost. And then the second question is we really need to know how frequently we're going to have to change that PPE. So this is where you might need to do a best case and a worst case scenario. So source your PPE first so you know how much one gown and one mask and one set of gloves costs. And then worst case, you are going to have to have eight sets per day if you had eight clients, because you may need to have a fresh set per client. We don't know, but you can kind of run some numbers so that you have a best case and a worst case. And what you should be doing as a business at the moment is kind of going, right, scenario one is this, scenario two is this, mm. scenario three, because we don't have some of those definite answers. Yeah. And actually, just touching on PPE, um, we've just had Natalie Faulkner on Facebook who's asked, should we be providing PPE for clients, e.g. masks, or should we just be doing an action plan where it's for employees? I guess this is a really big question, and I guess a lot of this will come from the government, but what's your kind of opinion on it? Yeah, so you need to keep up to date with the government website because they might say, if you're going to the supermarket, if you're going to another business, you have to wear a mask, which in that case, it will be the client's responsibility to come to your business wearing a mask. So mm. in that case, no, you shouldn't have to supply them with one because they should be coming and wearing one themselves. Would I really expect to get to Tesco and then supply me with one? No, I wouldn't because mm. that's a big, huge cost on a business. So hopefully customers and the general public are going to have to provide their own if they want to go somewhere. Um, again, if, if you didn't want that cost on a business, if you communicate it and tell your clients to arrive wearing a mask because if they've already come in and sat down and then put the mask on mm. it kind of defeats the object as well um but again we need to make sure we're following the government guidelines as and when they update them and bring them out mm. and vicky on facebook has said that um she's just had all new price lists etc printed not long before lockdown 
Um, so it would cost a lot more to order new ones in a lot of ways. She says, if we have a price increase, do you think it's worth them printing new leaflets now or just waiting till a little further in the future and just advertising that price increase online? Yeah, so what you could do is you could, I don't know how quickly or easily you can update your website, but you could just put your temporary prices on your website and just defer all of your clients um, to check out your new prices on the website on somewhere that's a digital format that will be very quick and easy. You could even do a Google Doc and put the link in your Instagram, on your Facebook and say, this is a temporary price increase um, and kind of funnel them to a, a digital document so that you've not got to print it because it might be a temporary inc increase for you for the next couple of months and then you can go back to using your normal price list and nikki on zoom has asked how do you reverse engineer profit so your profit will if you wanted to say do let's say for example you wanted to make 100 grand that year in your business year as profit then you would need to break down what each staff member would need to take per day what would be profit per day so from the year you break that down into the month the week the day um, and what turnover would you need to make per day in order for you to have that long-term goal of what your profit is and um We've had another question on Facebook. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find the ladies name. So um, pretty much quite a few people are actually asking this. They're saying, do you think there'll be a limit on the type of treatments that beauty salons and hair salons will be able to offer when they are able to reopen? I guess because of all the social distancing measures. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Because you know, the government, this is the other thing, the government can't also give a breakdown of each and every single industry of what they can and can't do. So I think as a business owner, it's going to become it come down to you doing a risk assessment for yourselves and the business as well. Um, and looking at each individual treatment and service um, and risk assessing it individually and saying, does this or does this not fall outside of the government guidelines? Mm. And um, Anita on Zoom has just asked how often you think um, beauty businesses should be increasing their prices? Like, is there a gold standard of how often they should be looking to do this? I mean, minimum once a year. I mean, we've, only, we've already just had national minimum wage increase. Mm. Um, so at least once a year, you should be have looking at, you know, you should be looking at your numbers every month. You should know your business costs every month. What's what's gone up, what's gone down. Um, and then, you know, you will know with your business costs and your numbers when and how much you need to have um, an increase in prices. Mm. And Barbara and Tracy on Zoom and a couple of other people on Facebook have all sort of um, touched on this thing about the best way to tell clients about the fact that you're having a price increase and, you know, what's the best language, the best way to do it. But also Tracy's just mentioned this point about obviously now that salons are going to have to incorporate PPE into the cost on top, should they be advertising that now to say that's part of why prices will be increasing? Yeah, I mean, I, that's where I think, again, it comes from the mindset because I feel that a lot of consumers are going to expect that companies are going to have to increase their prices in certain areas and depending what their product and service mm. is. Um, so the best way to communicate it is when they are ready to book their appointments is to tell them so make sure you check our new price price list um, because of the business impact that we've experienced over the last couple of months we have had to have a slight price increase this may be temporary mm. we may have a surcharge for ppe in all honesty you just be transparent and honest as to why ultimately we're having PPE, we're having social distancing for their health, for their protection. We're not doing it as a business choice. We're doing it to help, you know, everybody and to make sure that we all are doing our bit to reduce this infection. So it's not something we're doing by choice. We're not having a price increase to be greedy. You know, we're doing it 
as part of a global pandemic. So you just need to be really clear, transparent and honest as to why you've had to increase the prices or have a surcharge or whatever. I also think as well, you know, we definitely get the sense at PB that um, clients are so desperate to see their therapist or their hairdresser. And I think it's made people really value the services that these places give. And I actually think there'll be a greater appreciation for what everybody does. And I think a little price increase, I don't think it's going to matter too much in the grander scheme of things. Um, but Lenka on Zoom has asked, what is kind of an average yearly price increase? Is it like one pound on a treatment, five pound on a treatment, or does it have to be specific to the business? Yeah, so you'd go back to your business, you'd break down the business um, costs. Again, it depends what's happened in that year. For us this year, we've had a, a rise in national minimum wage. That's what mm. needs to be accounted for. So it's never a set, oh, it's 5%, it's 10%, it's whatever. We could have the VAT percentage go up. We could have, you know, there's all sorts of government impacts that your business could have at any given moment. So it's it needs to come from the numbers and the breakdown of the costs and making sure that it still is profitable for your business. And Leslie Custer and Chantelle Power on Zoom, they've kind of asked um, quite overlapping questions, but they've asked whether you think we should be trying to drive prices up as a whole as an industry, especially when there are therapists out there who are undercutting prices, which make it really difficult to create a standard, I guess. What's your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Like, I'm a big advocate in charging your worth. I think that as an industry, we should be charging correctly. We should be charging for the years of knowledge that we've got, not just the five minutes. And in all honesty, I wouldn't even look at what other salons are doing around you. Um, I can remember I had a client who called me in a bit of a panic one day. And she said, Jess, this client, this salon is open down the road with 11 pound haircuts. It's like, what shall I do? I don't know what to do. This is a night. Put a sign outside that you fix eleven pounds haircuts. Like <laughs> not, you've got to understand your ideal client, and that not everybody wants cheap. I would not want to go to somewhere that cut a hair for eleven pounds. I wouldn't. And just because somebody wants to be in a price war, that doesn't mean it's a good thing. You know, don't view it as a good thing. You know, not everybody wants to shop at Primark. Some people want to shop at Prada. Some people want to shop at Topshop and River Island. And there's so much scope in the industry to be wherever you want to be. So shut off to what everybody else is doing and focus on what you're doing and where you want to go and what you want to charge. And in all honesty, the ones that are undercharging, we do so many consultations with clients every single week and salon owners and most of them are not making any money mm. so do you want to do it and make some money and have a profitable business or do you just want to be in this price war and never make any money in your business honestly what is the point what is the point if your business is making a loss yeah what's the point of your business yeah that's so true I mean um Ellie Walker said oh my god well said or in capitals and I think that encompasses it a lot um I just wanted to go back we just had another question about PPE and this was from Carolyn on zoom and she said would you recommend possibly waiting before buying things like plastic screens PPE thermometers at this high price um and maybe wait until there's more available or also knowing necessarily if they're going to need every single part of that PPE for their business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't go and rush and buy screens and spend all this money unnecessarily. Um, because you've got to remember the kids are going back, you know, are potentially going back to school, all this stuff. It's got to go back to some sort of normality. So we're hoping it could just be, you know, aprons, gloves, um, masks, I would probably say to get a small amount of masks and gloves and aprons you'll use anyway. So they'll be consumed in your business at some point anyway. So it's not an expense. Mask, if you had some to get you through the first few days in case you have to wait for an order or anything, 
that I think is probably going to be the most likely part of PPE that we're going to have to have. Yeah. Um, so that wouldn't overly be too much money and too much money wasted if we don't and you're prepared. Um, but in terms of going the whole hog of screens and all of that stuff, I would not do, go down that road. The other thing you could think of temporarily swapping is disposable towels from your normal towels, which again, you could just use them and consume them in your business anyway. So it's not a loss as such. And um, Celia on Zoom has, um, oh, sorry, not Celia. Um, Claire has asked, how is it best to create an email list with clients? I guess in terms of getting in contact with them and letting them know what you're getting up to and preparing ready to reopen. Yeah, absolutely. So you if you have a salon system, you might have some email addresses in there. And what we've also taught our clients to do is to create a landing page where you can then create competitions or anything else that's going to drive your clients to opt in. If you're running competitions or anything on Facebook or social media, rather than just run the competition directly there, you need to be getting them onto your email list because you don't own Facebook, you don't own your Instagram, but you do own your email list. So you need to make sure that you're driving them to your email list so that you can um, communicate with them again and again and again. And um, we've had a couple of people, Man Manisha particularly, uh, who've just been asking about your contact details, Jessica. So the best way that they can contact you to um, potentially get your help for the future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the minute, on if you go on our Instagram, which is Jessica Crane, and then it's SISS -S, Specialist in Salon Success, we've got on our link tree, we've got loads of free tools and resources and all sorts. And we also have a free business consultation if you do want to book a call with my team and how you can work with us and all of that. Um, and do make sure you check out our client video testimonials as well on our website if you search jessica crane you'll find my website and you can have a little nosy around there at what programs we offer and what our clients have to say about us and um i know a couple of people on facebook have been asking about um whether they'll be able to see these slides if they've missed the start or they've missed a bit at the end this live will be permanently available on pb's facebook and we will be putting it on our youtube channel tomorrow so you can go back watch it all again, take notes down, um, because yeah, we wanna make sure you guys have access to it. And um, we've just got time for one more question. And um, we've just had one come from Debbie on Facebook. And she's just said, do you think it would be a good idea to get the Pfizer shields for ourselves rather than masks, thinking they may be more comfortable and practical? I think that would be personal choice. Um, if you find it more comfortable or practical, um, and I think just follow the government guidelines of what level, because that's the thing, we don't know what level of PPE. Um, masks all come in different levels, so we don't know what level we're going to have to have. So I would pause, I think, some cheaper masks just to get you started for when you can get back into the business. Um, and that won't be too much of an expense. And then go from there, because what if we only need them for a month or something can you know a visor mask how often are you going to have to sterilize it and clean it and you know just thinking of the practical impl implications of both um both masks as well and jessica elizabeth just asked if you could repeat your facebook page again please i think she just missed it yeah, so our Instagram is Jessica Crane S I S S, which is the specialist in salon success. Um, you can search. Uh, we've got a client face. We've got a Facebook group, which is Salon Success with Jessica Crane. Um, and yeah, if you search my name, you'll normally find all of my stuff that will come up on Facebook. But thank you so much, Jessica. This has been really, really. Um... Great. I mean, there's been loads of information I've learned and people have absolutely loved the knowledge that you've been sharing and hopefully everyone can use some of this and apply it in their business. Um, and like I said, um, this will be available on Facebook forever <laughs> and also be on YouTube from tomorrow. Um, but thank you so much for your time, Jessica. We really appreciate it.
Oh, thank you, Amanda. It's lovely to catch up with you. And I hope you keep your team are well. Yeah, we're all fine, thank you. And hopefully um, we'll get to see you speak at a PB show soon. Um, but for now, thank you, everybody. Stay safe and well, and we'll see you for the next webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.